Hey Explorers, this is Jessica. And this is Robert. With Exploring the Local Life. And today we are talking about our... Must-haves for boondocking. And we are doing this as a collaborative effort with the Freedom Theory. If you guys have not heard of them or checked out their videos, you are missing out. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. They are RV full-time and they are expecting their first baby. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So check them out. I don't know how the, the dog feels about this, theory. but you know, Yeah, bear. He's so cute. All right. So what do we got, Jess? All right. So first on the list. Oh, and just uh, letting you guys know, this is in no particular order. This is in uh, stream of consciousness type of thing that we came up with these. Yeah. And all that noise you hear is Nadia in the background playing with Legos. That's right. So, Must have for kids RV boondocking. Right, Legos. So the first thing, generator. Yeah, you need electricity to power your um, computers, power your television, power your non-12 volt items, which is just about everything in a modern home, like a computer, microwave, cell phone, cell phone charging, and all that. So generator, very much a big must have. That's right. And another thing with the generator is that it doesn't rely on anything other than gasoline. Yeah, if you've got gasoline, you're good to go. So go maybe it brings us to point number two of something that you must have while boondocking is... Gasoline. Gasoline, or else uh, that generator is just going to be sitting there taking up space. Yeah, it's going to be a one big heavy brick. So... Noise is killing me. <laughs> so another must-have item when you're boondocking is solar. Yes. Uh... Because sometimes it just is ridiculous to plug in your gen run your generator to, I don't know, grind up some coffee beans. Yeah. That's a bit ridiculous. You know? So yeah. if you actually have solar, you don't have to worry about that stuff. You already, your batteries are all powered up and you can plug in your little grinder and grind away to your so, heart's content. Yes. So as I understand it, for solar, you need the solar panels. You need the battery bank. You need an inverter to convert the energy to something your RV can use that you can plug into. That's right. Because otherwise... Uh, it's just charging your solar DC battery. Right. Which That's will not just, exactly uh, right, and I'm not an expert, so, you know, go to the experts. It'll just uh, charge up your battery so basically you can run your lights. Yeah, and that's okay. not a lot of fun. That's not really, uh, if you're boondocking eventually, you're going to be like, wow, great, this is... Campfires are cool. They are. They are. I'm not saying whatever, but most of us at our RVing want a little bit more comfort. That's why we're not in a tent. I shot at a campfire basically. yesterday while it was snowing. Yes, we have some video footage of that. Maybe we should insert it here. <laughs> The next item that is very helpful that we got this tip from Hebert's Travel, which got a variation of it from Lisa Brown. This so wasn't our idea. Oh, yes, yes. Was to use a saran wrap, the press and seal, I'm sorry, the press and seal on your plates. So that way when you're done with it, you just peel off and throw it away. And it takes up like hardly any space in your garbage can. So and you don't have to worry water. about zero water and zero paper plates. Now, can you uh, press and seal win, your win. forks? Press and seal your forks. Uh, I don't know. Anybody want to try it? Try it. <laughs> yeah, perhaps know. you can. It's Maybe just a can. matter of... Yeah, you can. You're not going to press and seal your knife, though. No. <laughs> that might get a little icky. All right. Next item on our list. But that is... Say... Isn't, that, wait, wait, isn't that a great idea? Press and seal on your plates. So once you're done eating, oh, you no, just that is. peel it off. You press and, and seal on throw your knife. It away. I was like, that's a stupid idea. Alrighty, we've had a long day. We've got Believe to get me. this video. It's already nine. one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, three, three o'clock, and we're trying to do this at nine this morning. What you need, the next item that you need, if you are boondocking, is a full fresh water tank. Guess what? There is no water at your boondocking site, or at least there isn't a convenient little spigot that you just. Very, very rarely. Well, then you're not really boondocking. No, no, you're boondocking. No, not if it's at if it's at your site. No, if it is, if you are in a campground that doesn't have any hookups, is but there somewhere test to there now? is a I thought we were spigot, against purity you tests are for boondocking. boondocking. But if you're at a site and you have a water spigot, you're no longer boondocking. You have spigot. water right there. But anyway, so have a nice, clean, and full freshwater tank. Yeah. So and that way, if you're going to go boondocking and you're planning it out, you must disinfect your freshwater tank. Yes, Nomadic Fanatic has in an advance. excellent in advance. two videos about how to do that. So look that up. We've, yep. Yes. We've done it once in two and a half years. We don't you. We've only boot. No, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yep. All right. 
Outside, okay. <laughs> We're still alive. All right, so the <clears throat> next item on our list is extra water and preferably in collapsible water containers because, mm-hmm. well, then when you're not using them, they're not taking up volumes of space all in your tiny RV living space. Yes, how many collapsible uh, water tanks do we have? Zero. What do we have instead? <laughs> water jugs, regular gallon water. Gallon jugs and... An aquatainer that we haven't used since we went tent camping five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty years ago. Not twenty years ago, my goodness. We didn't even well, no, we didn't know each other twenty years ago. We knew each other um, twenty years ago. Twenty, 20 years, years ago. ago. 20 years? Yes, yes. Let's that stay would, on task. That would be ninety seven. Stay on task. Wasn't so it like ninety nine? I was nineteen when we met. <laughs> All right, here's yet another RV Bunaki must have that we do not have, but we want. What is that? Composting toilet and or, not and or, or an incinerator. Incinerator is what I want, yo. Yeah, so literally with the incinerator one, it literally just... And then turns all your waste into ashes, which just horrifies me because I can just see myself or Robert <gasps> empty the tray. <laughs> or a nice gust of wind in our beautiful moon. <laughs> then you're breathing in all of that but item. it's incinerated it is pure. also it also takes electricity so Lots we have another item that takes up electricity when you're boondocking but when you, you don't have an a incinerator lot of in your own travel trailer mm, so that's yeah. why i say composting toilet and yeah. the main reason Sorry. that we are big on that is because uh your regular flush tank uses a heck of a lot of water a whole lot of water and then you have the whole black tank issue where are you gonna dump it's like it's like you have to go to the bathroom yourself your whole travel trailer is like i gotta Gotta go. I never thought about it. And you're driving, <laughs> looking for a place to dump this stuff. That's horrible. And you're like, oh my god, we're gonna have to go to an RV park. And then yeah, you have to end up paying twenty bucks to dump your tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, every, but, the whole time you're doing it, people are watching you, saying, "He's just pulling up to dump his tank." Yes, we are. Did and we pay? pay. But another advantage to doing that is removing that. You're not removing your black tank, but you're there's no black water anymore. So then you can combine your gray and black water tanks. So how does this work? So you have a gray tank and a black tank and a simple travel trailer like ours. The gray tank and the black tank both join into one outlet. So therefore, you buy a waste gate that totally blocks everything. And then you open the black tank and all the water in the, that goes in the gray from your sinks will just go from the gray and flow and equalize into the black and the gray at the same time. So you've doubled your capacity. And then only once you pull out the master drain will stuff drain out of your tanks yeah. it's genius cost 20 bucks it didn't it even cost 20, 20 bucks, bucks to, to get a yeah, wastegate valve there you go so okay so obviously we have limited a water capacity in yeah. our freshwater tank even with extra buckets and Bladders containers and, and whatever's of water i mean it's limited you're so. gonna get dirty dirty yep so how do you get yourself clean we have a solution for you Epic wipes. Epic wipes. They're huge. They're like towel-like sized. Mm -hmm. All natural. All natural. You can tear them as needed. So if you have kids like we do, you take one huge epic wipe, you tear it into three, four pieces and say, here you go, kid. Wipe down. Yeah. Uh, They're very effective. They have a nice, very clean scent to them. Yes. We love them. They're great. I'll be ordering some for your birthday. Oh, happy birthday to me. Yes. Epic wipes. Epic wipes. I think if you open, if you enter local 10 at checkout, you'll get a discount. Hopefully. And if not, be like, hey, we heard this from Exploring the Local Life. What happened? Yeah. Speaking of personal hygiene, hair gets greasy and icky. So how do you... Not this hair. Yeah, it does. Eventually. So what do you do? Shave your head? No. You get some dry shampoo. (laughs) It literally just sprays in. You do this. And there you go. Your hair smells better. And it's uh, all greasy and disgusting, and it's relatively inexpensive. So, dry shampoo. Dry shampoo. Next thing you want to do is prepare before you go and fill up your propane tanks. Maybe even have a backup tank. We have three. Two that came with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not really that huge either. But but maybe we can make those things last. I know we can. Yeah. So, we have three propane, 20 pound propane tanks. Two that came with the travel trailer that sit up on the forward tongue. And then we bought a third that we carry around with us, loose around the truck, waiting for it to jump out like a bomb. Anyhow, we got that because when we RV in winter, if we run out of propane, it can be a bad thing. So we always have a backup ready to go. That's right. And when you're boondocking, we use our propane tanks to... 
Run the refrigerator. The stove and oven. Stove and oven. And the propane is also used to run the hot water heater. That's right. But for the most part, when we are boondocking, we are not taking any type of showers. We are epic wiping it or taking some paper towels and just, you know. Wiping it down. And away we go. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're boondocking. We're, but you know, if you guys want to do that, that is also an option. If you're a little guys. bit more dainty and like to have clean every day. <laughs> You'll be using Boondocking water. may not be for you. <laughs> yeah, but then again, there are sure there are. I am sure there are some people that maintain a very rigorous cleanliness regime, but not with two kids and limited water. No, and again, we have a twenty-six foot uh, RV. Our water capacity, fresh water capacity, is what thirty-five gallons. Thirty-five 40 gallons. Forty gallons. I mean, that's nothing. Man, you can just dump that in one dishwashing. Session. That is like, I mean, even taking those five-minute showers. Uh, yeah, we'll be out of that water in like a day. No, thanks. Yeah. So make sure you're full up on the propane tanks so that when you are out there, you have hot water when you need it. Yes. And our very last must have. This is a Roberts and Jessica must have item. Maybe not on your list, but oops, yep, as we move the camera. the camera. Just kidding. The Bioletti Mocha Pot. It comes is, in various sizes. It is. And as you can see, look, where's the outlet for this thing? There is none. So you just. We can make espresso co coffee just right on the stovetop with our propane so we don't have to worry about putting on the generator to make ourselves a cup of coffee. Yep, so we can get up in the morning, early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, just good as we do early in the morning. <laughs> yep, get Oops. up, do our... our yeah, there's a... Yeah, yeah let's... <laughs> we, you've, you've been using it really well. Yeah, so we have two of these. This is a single serve, and then we have one that's good for two folks. So get your Bialetti mocha pot. Yes. It's a lovely thing. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, please be sure to check out The Freedom Theory, Josh and Kaylee Spy. And, uh, you know, what do you think? Tell us about what your must-haves are for boondocking. That's right. And any experiences that you may have, or if you think we're absolutely insane that we would boondock and not have hookups and all that stuff. Yeah. And the water. Can you tell the camera what is your must-have for boondocking? Oh, kid-friendly places. Okay, that's All a right. good one. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a kid. Yeah, you you are find, a kid. <laughs> you gotta find kid-friendly places when you go boondocking to go yeah. visit. <laughs> and um, there's a playground here, so it's kid-friendly. Yep, but we're not boondocking right now, right? Because we have hookups. Ca campground hosts. We are campground hosts. <laughs> Tutu. Tutu. All right, guys, thank you so much. We will catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Kiss my cheek. Mm. <laughs>